For the gaming, entertainment, and media track, we have Jerry Ellsworth of Tilt 5. She'll be talking about AR spaces in familiar places, social connection through tabletop AR. Jerry, welcome, and thank you for joining us here today. Thank you. It's an honor. Oh, I'm so excited to get started talking with you. Your talk it has, oh my goodness, let's try it again. I'm so excited to get talking with you today. Your presentation at AWE 2022 sounds amazing. I know many people will be excited uh, to come see the, the blending between community, tabletop, and AR. Wow. Can you please tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do in the metaverse? Oh, that's a great question. So I'm kind of an odd bird. I've had uh, a very interesting career from race car drivers to owning retail computer stores, did toy design. Ultimately, I ended up at Valve Software, put together their hardware R&D department. Out of that, the HTC Vive, a lot of the Oculus technology came from there. And in fact, the technology I developed uh, for Till 5 came out of uh, Valve. And so I've been in the space for quite some time and fell in love with the idea of bringing people together with augmented reality and mixed reality. That's awesome. Can you tell me how often are you in the metaverse and what do you do there? <laughs> metaverse, patooey. Ah, <laughs> go away, Zuckerberg. Now, you know, I... I I guess I've been in the metaverse well before it had a, a name that everyone's like been latching onto. I've been a multiplayer online video game player for quite some time. So I consider that a metaverse. So and I probably do primarily games. I love it. Thank you. Is there a big idea that you're excited to share with your audience at AWE 2022? Yeah, I'm really excited to talk about how we can move uh, users' behaviors through a more pragmatic approach to mixed reality. So instead of taking people out of their beautiful world and putting them in a fully synthesized world, we're putting mixed reality on the table. So you, your friends and family can come together and experience it in a really comfortable and intimate kind of um, experience instead of a fully synthesized experience, which will probably be a little bit much for most uh, users out there. I love uh, how isolating that AR experience into the tabletop it gives you the ability to give people sort of a right-sized bite mm -hmm. of augmented reality for their interest and that purpose. This question of what's the right amount of metaverse was something that came up in our conversation with Cynthia Maller at Walmart just last week. So really cool to see that popping up again. What are you excited to learn at AWE? Oh, I love going to AWE because you get to cross-pollinate with folks from all different companies and see what they're up to. So everyone working in this space has a unique perspective and there's a lot to be learned. It's when there's an emerging market like this, no one really knows like exactly what to do. And so you have to experiment a little bit and everybody's a little bit right. Everyone's a little bit wrong. And so by coming together, we're all going to be kind of honing our skills. As somebody who's been in this space for a long time and has been honing those skills, it, it seems like patience as well as that partnership could be really, really key to be able to, to have that vision that would last both with people's interest and the, the technology getting ready. Yeah. You know, 12 years ago, when we were looking at this at Valve, we were convinced any day now, next year, you know, you know, mixed reality is going to be here. It's going to be mainstream. And after getting a couple black eyes from that not really happening, you come back, come out with a little bit more of a pessimistic view and a more pragmatic view. You're like, okay, this is going to be an evolution. It's it's kind of like the uh, video game market back in the '70s. Like you look at the first joystick that came out on home consoles, they look wacky and crazy. They're nothing like the refined like Xbox controller you use today. That you know, it's really hard to improve on this design that's evolved over 30, 40 years. Same's going to happen in mixed reality. Like we're going to have notions of what's right and wrong. We're going to be completely wrong at times. And then 30 years from now, we're going to look back and be like, oh, how quaint. We thought that people were going to use magic wands to interact. It's so obvious now that it's like, retinal scans and brainwaves or whatever. Brainwaves probably isn't that far off. You know, 
users in emerging markets, you have to change their behavior. So we're used to using cell phones and mice and stuff like that. The interactions are going to be completely different. And we're going to have to train people to do these new interactions, get them comfortable with it. And out of that's going to surface these interactions that are going to, you know, stand the test of time. So I can't believe it. We're getting into the speed round now. Do you have a metaverse avatar or just an avatar? And if so, what does it look like? I don't. If I did, it would probably be robotic. Ooh, I love it. Uh, so our last question is an opportunity to give a shout out or to introduce us to somebody who's impacted your journey within understanding augmented reality and the metaverse. Is there somebody who's helped your learning and journey within AR and VR? Yeah, I, th I think my shout out is gonna go to Nolan Bushnell. So I really didn't know Nolan very well, met him maybe once. And then I had a previous startup called Cast AR, which had a huge crash and burn, which was really a, an emotional like trauma on me. I was really sad that my startup had failed and I was sitting in the office by myself. I didn't know what to do. And I get this random phone call. It's like, hey, it's Nolan, Nolan, Nolan Bushnell, founder of Atari. He's like, I saw your technology a few years ago at some event and it's completely magical. It's gonna change the world. You're gonna put these into hundreds of millions of people's homes. You cannot give up now. You know, here's a piece of advice. There's always a way, just go and figure it out. And with that catalyst, I went out and reached out to all my mentors and advisors and I had this big failure. I'm really embarrassed about it. Like, can I really go forward with this? And they're like, heck yeah, Silicon Valley is all about failure. And it's, it's good that you failed and you can, you know, buy the assets and go forward with your business. And so that foundation and kind of urging by some industry legend out of the blue pushed me forward and then kind of recentered my thinking about like how um, to run a business. I took all of these learnings from my previous startup where we were trying to boil the ocean. We weren't focused. We we're trying to be bigger than we were. And then Tilt 5, we're hyper-focused. We really look at our customer. We try to understand them. What's the value proposition? And that kind of honing I talked about, mm -hmm. you know, really happened. What a gift for, like you said, a, a legend uh, to reach out with those words of encouragement, knowing that that was probably where you were and that it uh, it sounds like right they probably had a similar story in their life uh, <laughs> yeah. as well he told me a couple of stories of like out of anyone that's messed up companies i'm probably he said something like i'm probably the the biggest offender of it or Jerry Ellsworth, uh, thank you so much for joining us today on the AWE 2022 preview. We look forward to seeing you at AWE in just a few weeks. And again, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much.